John Nixon from Eagle Lake Woodworking. And this video is part of a series on how I built a pool table. Specifically, this video talks about the columns that make up the leg system and how I constructed them using the lock miter bit on the router table. The columns are hollow with double wall thickness to receive a mortise for the cross members on one side and to support the main beams of the pool table on the other side. The columns are constructed using the lock miter bit on the router table, which creates an interlocking joint the full length of the corner. Before we begin, let's take a look at the support system that makes up the pool table. There's cross slats, main beams, and a pair of legs. This video focuses on the columns that make up the legs. It's a four-sided column that's doubled up on two sides and has an additional vertical support for the cross beams of the pool table. I start by squaring up my panel on the table saw using the crosscut sled. Once I have a 90 degree reference point, I'll make 8 inch rips, 16 in all, to make 4 legs. Now that the stock for the legs is cut, it's time to set up the lock miter bit. This can be a little bit tedious, but I've worked out a system that makes setting it up pretty easy. The first step in the process is to set the bit height. You want to raise the bit until the portion indicated in the diagram is centered on the stock. Using a backer board, I cut two identical test pieces. With the test pieces cut, I interlock them and take a look and see if one is higher than the other. If there's a ridge, that means the bit is set too low. I make a change in the bit height and recut two more test pieces interlocking them again and checking to see how they fit. They're flush across the face means we've got the bit height perfect. I move on to doing the same procedure to set the position of the fence. I'll cut test pieces, run against the fence, interlock them, and check for a height difference and move the fence in or out accordingly until they're flush. Once we've got the joint perfect, we'll hang out of these test pieces to use as setup blocks in the future. Cutting a joint like this would be a lot to ask of the router in a single pass. So I make a fence spacer that I install behind the main fence that offsets it by about a quarter of an inch. I make the first pass with the spacer installed. I use push blocks to ensure enough downward pressure and pressure against the fence. After cutting all 16 boards, I remove the spacer and cut the second pass. This will be the final cut for that edge of the board. We repeat the process for the vertical cut against the fence. We've installed the fence spacer, we make the first pass, we'll remove the fence spacer and make the second pass on all 16 boards. With the joint cut on all 16 boards, it's time to glue them up. I glue up half of a post at one time. I spread yellow glue through the tongue and the grooves of the lock miter joint 
and then insert the perpendicular piece. A few taps with the hammer seats the joint. Check it for square and then set that aside to dry. I find that assembling half the post at one time makes it go a little bit easier in this step. We'll apply some glue, insert some spacer blocks, and then put on the third side to the column. Glue up the remaining two joints and insert the fourth side. A few taps with the hammer, seats to join home. If you have any trouble spots, you can add some clamps. What we end up with is a nice crisp clean corner, but that's not the look we're going for. I'd like to see that corner chamfered. We can't really do that since we constructed these columns out of plywood. Or can we? I've worked out a system where I cut a quarter inch by quarter inch rabbit in all four corners of the column. It's in this rabbit that we'll glue in a hardwood strip that we can later chamfer off. So cut some thin strips, apply some yellow glue, and secure it with masking tape. After the glue is dry, we have a little bit of a lip there to take care of. We'll run it through the flush cut bit in the router and flush up that hardwood strip with the sides of the column. So we're back to a nice crisp clean corner again that we can chamfer off this time because it's real wood. There's the look we're going for. The next step in the process is to cut the columns to length. On the table saw, I'll use the crosscut sled, and I'll cut a little bit off all four sides just to square up one end. Then I'll install a stop block, and again, cut all four sides, butt it up against the stop block. Now that the posts are cut to size, we'll double up two of the walls on the inside of the column. The one side will make thicker to receive the mortises, and the other side will double up to support the main beam of the pool table. I spread yellow glue on an even layer across the board and insert it into the column. I'll secure this board with a few brad nails and repeat the process for the other three columns. Next I cut and install the third tall vertical piece on the inside of the column. This piece is going to have holes in it that the main beam of the pool table will attach to. I gang up all four pieces. I'll drill them all at once to make sure that the placement of the holes is identical. Installing the tall supports is the same as before. Spread yellow glue, slide the piece into the column, and secure it with a few brad nails. The end result is a sturdy column with the look of real timber that will serve as a strong foundation to support our pool table. To view the rest of the videos in this series and videos on other topics, visit EagleLakeWoodworking.com and click on the videos link. You can even sign up to be notified when new videos become available.